Today's video, we're talking about energy efficiency and air tightness. Now, these are ways that you can lower your carbon footprint. Now, today's video specifically, I'm going to show you how we achieve an airtight building. Now, first of all, that starts with an ICF structure, and that's ICF right from your footings right to the roof. In today's video, we're going to talk about energy efficiency and how to achieve an airtight building. Now, this is a great way to lower your carbon footprint. So specifically, I am going to be talking about an ICF build from footing all the way to the roof. And we're going to be talking about how to basically show you how I've achieved some really airtight numbers with this type of building practice. If you hear me say ACH, that's an acronym for air exchanges per hour. And I'll, I'll get into what that is at the end of the video because I have repeated it quite a bit over some of my content lately. I'm pretty proud to say that our builds have exceeded the standard industry for air tightness by almost tenfold. And if you've ever heard of Passive House, they have some pretty strict uh, standards and we've exceeded those as well. So just to throw out a number, 0.23 ACH, 0.42 and 0.45. Those are some of the houses that have been tested that we've built. So let me show you how we've got those numbers. So first of all, you're gonna build your ICF structure. Now you're gonna go right past the floor because ICF's not just for basements, you're gonna go right to the roof. Questions you may have right now are, how do I get my windows to seal, like your buck material? Nadura has a product that's uh, a buck that actually has some dovetails in it. So that would make it super airtight because if you were to put this right here and pour your concrete, your concrete would actually pour around these, keep it super airtight. But in the past, we've even had, this is a bad example, but just like a smooth buck material. We put a sill gasket on the back, we porcupine it, we pour the concrete, that's airtight enough. You don't need to get any more crazy than that, right? Don't overthink it. For our top plate, so you, you need some sort of way to fasten your trusses down to your ICF wall. We've been using LVL quite a bit. Doesn't matter what you use. Underneath what we install is we kind of go one bead of acoustical sealant, and then we go one bead of PL Premium. And that just creates a seal between the concrete and the bottom of that LVL or that top plate. Now, if they made sill gasket that was like that thick, we would use it, but they don't. And that, yeah, the sill gasket is just way too thin to use in that application. So that's what we use. Um, in a few minutes, you'll see the other step that we do to add air tightness. And yeah, you may or may not need to use those strips under your top plate is where I'm going with that. So under your slab, that's a fairly important step. Now, like I said, don't overcomplicate it. We literally just lay our vapor barrier. Um, in some cases, like when we, there was one time where we needed four inches of EPS foam. So we do a layer of EPS, then our vapor barrier. We wrap that up the sides. We use acoustical sealant to seal the, pol the poly or the vapor barrier to the ICF. And then we just tape it. So you see the tuck tape? That's just there so that nobody snags it the vapor barrier and folds it over all funny. So that's all the tapes. Therefore, it's, we're not gonna rely on that. It's the acoustical seal. We just seal around all our pipes and all the penetrations coming up through the slab. And I think probably the most important detail for the slab is under a tub where the waste and overflow drain is, you have to seal around that because that could be easily forgotten and it's under the tub, who's ever gonna think about it, but then when you actually do it, blower door test, it'll pull, pull air from under the slab. So seal that up. That's probably one of the most important tips of this video. So when you're ready to do your vapor barrier on your ceiling or on the underside of your trusses, really all you have to do is just do a, a pretty good job, pay attention to the details. Same as the slab, we take the vapor barrier, we fold it down over the walls, we do acoustical sealant on the top plate, at the top plate where the ICF and that meet, and then below that, and then again, we, we tuck tape it, but that's really just to stop when you're boarding. When you board, you don't catch the poly and tear it off, or it doesn't get all mixed up and folded funny. You always have to make sure your vapor barrier is on positive backing. So you ne never rely on an overlap, just loosey-goosey flapping in the wind. You, you have an overlap on wood, solid backing, you know, your acoustical seal and you have a proper overlap. Then when the drywall goes on and squishes it, it makes it airtight. Um, same with your light boxes or anything in the ceiling. Just 
like a lot of people are using those PVC boxes now and they're great. We don't just rely on the foam that's there. We acoustical sealant that. And then just make sure your drywallers aren't roto zipping the heck out of your ceiling. And if they do, you got to fix it. But yeah, just do a good job boarding and you won't cut your poly all tech. Another important note is anytime you have penetrations through your interior walls, whether it's wiring or a plumbing stack, you just have to seal those up. So I would spray foam those gaps. And then if you want to really be paranoid, probably use some silicone or something. I have heard that acoustical sealant can, if it gets too hot out, it can actually drip out of those holes and then lose your air tightness. So um, yeah, we use spray foam and silicone and it, it seals those gaps up because that's a big one. Heat will rise up through the walls and through all those or vice versa, right? You'll get airflow through any holes that's going from your walls into your attic. For windows and doors, we just simply spray foam it three or four inches. We bat the rest. We don't get fancy. And that's the whole point of the video is with an ICF structure, it doesn't like, you don't really have to overthink it. You don't have to do a whole bunch of steps. You don't have to worry about trades messing something up. You can't really screw it up. Penetrations out of the wall, you just got to seal them. It's not that hard. Other than that, like that's all you have to do. I, like in our area, there's guys who are having a hard time doing a conventional build and trying to get one ACH. And that to them, they're super happy about that. So I might as well talk about ACH. So that's air exchanges per hour. That's the total volume of the house of air gets lost every single hour. Standard build right now, two code is 2.5 air exchanges per hour. Here, I'm gonna show you this chart. This chart, I actually developed this for that house that we got the 0.23 ACH on, and it just shows you the number differences. Because anytime you're losing air, you're conditioning that air, or whether you're heating it or cooling it, and if you're losing two and a half times that every hour, that's, that's just money out of the window, right? You're, you're burning energy and it's lost all the time. So if you can build something that's super airtight and you don't need a whole bunch of extra products or extra labor, extra steps, I see if you don't need anything, it's super simple to achieve. So that's a wrap for today. I did want to just put that video out there of just showing you how we've achieved those numbers. And basically we didn't go crazy. We didn't have to. It's all built into the ICF and the, the probably my favorite part about it is like, oh, I f fell into the wall and I scratched it or I gouged the foam all the heck. I didn't wreck my air tightness. I could paying a thousand photos in this house when the house is all done. I'm not going to punch a thousand holes in my poly. You'll never, you'll never wreck the air tightness of an ICF. So with that, thanks for tuning in. So our builds are, uh, okay, I'll get there. I'll get there. Our builds are getting some really airtight numbers. Almost 10, 10 okay. Boom. Okay.